today we will be going to discuss about the large intestine and the large intestine is having the length of approximately 1.5 meters it is only 1.5 meter long but the small intestine was 6.25 meter long but then too it is called as what then too it was not called as large it is called as large it is only 1.5 meter long its diameter is larger than the small intestine in diameter not in length in diameter it is larger than the small intestine in diameter it is larger than the small intestine and hence it is named as large intestine it is not given the name because of the length it is given the name because of its diameter which is more than the small intestine so its diameter is approximately 2.5 inches though its diameter is not uniform throughout the large intestine that it is not uh, always uh, 2.5 inches at some places it may vary in diameter but on an average if i talk about it is 2.5 inches in diameter okay and this large intestine is divided into how many parts three parts cecum colon and rectum it is divided into three parts cecum colon and rectum first part is cecum second part is colon third part is rectum now let's have a discussion on the cecum now cecum is a pouch like junction between ileum and colon why because we know very well last part of uh, the small intestine was ileum and the next part and the next part of the large intestine is the colon so cecum is in between the ileum and the colon so it is a pouch like junction between ileum and the colon and ileum and cecum junction the junction of ileum and cecum the junction of ileum and cecum is called as ileocecal junction and this junction is guarded by the ileocecal valve we know very well that ileocecal valve is present at the junction of the ileum and the cecum now the question arises what is the role of the ileocecal valve so we have already studied about the cardiac sphincter pyloric sphincter so all the sphincters or the valves which are present in the alimentary canal they are having the role to prevent the backflow of the food from the cecum means they allow the food from ileum to cecum but does not allow the regurgitation regurgitation means it doesn't allows the backflow of the food from cecum to ileum it allows food to come from ileum to the cecum but that does not allow the food to go from cecum to uh, that is the ileum fine now cecum is 6 cm long cecum is 6 cm long and externally it bears and externally it bears a blind tube having lymphoid tissue again i am uh, repeating cecum is 6 cm long and externally it bears a blind tube externally it bears a blind tube having the lymphoid tissue okay having the lymphoid tissue and it is called as vermiform appendix say for like this type like this type a blind pouch is there and this is called as the vermiform appendix so this is the cecum and this is the vermiform appendix it is outgrowth of cecum basically it is the this is cecum and its outgrowth is called as its outgrowth is called as the vermiform appendix okay so outgrowth of cecum is called as vermiform appendix and it is considered vestigial in human beings it is considered vestigial in human beings means it is a non functional structure in human beings why because in humans it is not involved in cellulose digestion it is not involved in cellulose digestion in human beings no cellulose digestion occur right now sometimes what happens due to infection and due to food decay inflammation of the vermiform appendix occur so inflammation of the vermiform appendix due to the food decay and due to some worm infection it is called as what appendicitis and appendicitis occur here okay so inflammation of the vermiform appendix due to the food decay and infection is called as the appendicitis you might have about heard about the appendix okay which is more popular name in india appendix uh, but uh, clinically it is called as appendicitis now cecum is not well developed in the case of the human beings because no cellulose digestion is happening there 
but cecum is very well developed in the case of the herbivores and in them it is involved in the cellulose digestion it is involved in cellulose digestion but in we people uh, it is not so much developed now coming to the next part of the large intestine and it is known as the colon colon is the largest part of the small intestine colon is the largest part of the small intestine means out of the 1.5 meter length maximum part of the large intestine is covered by the colon and colon has three longitudinal bands now very very important colon has three longitudinal bands composed of longitudinal muscle fibers colon has three longitudinal bands which are composed of which are composed of longitudinal muscle fibers and these are called as these are called as tini coli these are called as tini coli these are called as tini coli and the tini coli contracts these longitudinal muscle fibers known as the tini coli contracts and draws the remainder of the wall and draws the remainder of the wall of the colon into small pouches and that small pouches are called as what hostra say for if these are the three longitudinal muscle fibers then the remainder of the the remainder of the wall is drawn into small pouches and these small pouches are called as hostra these small pouches are called as hostra now this colon as we know very well it is the largest and the most developed part it is the most developed part colon is largest part of the large intestine and it is having how many parts it is having four parts ascending colon transverse colon ascending colon transverse colon descending colon and pelvic colon so this is ascending colon this is ascending colon this is transverse colon this is descending colon this is the pelvic colon this part this is the pelvic colon which opens into rectum okay and rectum opens into rectum opens into anal canal here is the anal canal and anal canal opens outside through a pore known as the anus okay so colon has four parts ascending colon transverse colon descending colon and the pelvic colon now this pelvic colon that is the last part known as the sigmoid colon continues into the rectum continues into the rectum now rectum is only 7 to 8 inches long in humans rectum is only 7 to 8 inches long in humans and it is the last part of the alimentary canal it is the last part of the alimentary canal and it terminates into and it terminates into a 3 cm long and it terminates into a 3 cm long tube like structure known as the anal canal and the anal canal is called as the anus and the anal canal is called as the anus and this anus is guarded by two anal sphincters or two valves which is known as which are called as internal anal sphincter and external anal sphincter fine and uh, at last uh, large intestine serve to store unabsorbed food remnants temporarily and it also absorbs uh, some water some water in salt that will be discussing in the physiology of the digestion it absorbs some uh, salt and uh, the water and it serves to store unabsorbed food uh, remnants uh, temporarily until and unless they are not released out by the anus okay so this was all about the large intestine so today we have completed the alimentary canal now uh, in the next videos we will be dealing with uh, the digestive glands say for the liver and the pancreas salivary glands and all and at last we'll be discussing with the physiology of the digestion so thanks a lot for watching me